Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining today. My name is Kelly Jensen, and I'm an associate director in the UCSD Career Center. I also have my colleague, Tammy, assisting me with technical support today. Tammy, you wanna say hi? Hi, everyone. And we have Roxanne Farkas, who is also an associate director in the Career Center working with social science majors. Roxy, you wanna say hi? Is she there? Oh, she's on mute, okay. <laughs> Um, she will be keeping an eye on the chat box to respond to questions directly or to catch my attention as we go. So welcome to Career Coaching for Social Science majors. I thought this was going to be a casual conversation among a small group of students. So I'm a little surprised, but very happy that so many of you signed up. Um, I wasn't planning on recording this workshop but I had several requests to do so. So yes, this is going to be recorded. So if you prefer to have your camera off, that is perfectly acceptable. I put together this series because these are topics that students most frequently come to me for assistance. And I'll be offering a different topic each week for the first eight weeks of the quarter. And you're welcome and encouraged to attend as many as you like. Today's topic is the first of two on career exploration, and we'll discuss ways you can start researching your options if you're not sure where to start. Uh, I'll give you tips and guide you through some resources, and there'll be time at the end for questions as well. Please feel free to put questions in the chat box as we go, and we'll do our best to address them in real time. I also encourage you to schedule an appointment with me or with Roxy or any of the other advisors in the Career Center if you would like more individualized guidance. Now, before we get started, if you don't mind sharing, I'd like for everyone to drop their major and minor, if you like, into the chat box so we can get an idea of who we have here today. Communication, psychology, whoa, political science, psychology, global health, anthropology, sociology, economics, economics, political science, international studies. Wow, we got a great mix here. Thank you all. Thank you for sharing. So we're going to go ahead and get started with a slide. Tammy, if you want to start the slideshow, that would be great. So where do you start? This is a question that we get really frequently in the Career Center. And so hopefully this workshop can help you find some basic resources. And so today we are gonna talk about the resources that are available to you on Handshake and how to find those. We'll also talk a little bit about assessments, career and personal assessments, as well as networking. And these are some of the best, uh, best places to start to, you know, um, start looking into where you wanna go with your degree. So Tammy, if you wanna to go to the next slide. So Handshake, there are a lot of really good resources on Handshake. And some of you may already be familiar with uh, maneuvering around through Handshake and what's available. And some of you may not. Some, some students I know don't even know how to make an appointment in the Career Center. So I'm gonna take you through Handshake to show you where to find these things. And feel free to put your questions in the chat box as we go. Roxy will answer or flag me down if, if um, I'm going too fast and, and you want me to show you something different. So um, I will go ahead and start sharing my screen. Tammy, if you wanna open that up. All right, is everybody able to see my screen, I hope? This is the homepage of Handshake, what it looks like from the student view. And um, it's pretty self-explanatory, this front page. You, you can 
look for jobs, you can research employers, you can find out about others who are on Handshake, um, research different career paths, sign up for events that are going on. Today, I'm gonna to take you to the Career Center tab. This is what we're gonna focus on. So open up Career Center. Handshake's moving a little slow today. Um, so once you open up the Career Center, this right here is where you can make appointments with any of the career coaches. You can um, sign up to do a resume review, do some more career, uh, career exploration, whatever it is you may need assistance with, we are here for you. This resources tab, this is where I wanna take you today. So when you click on that, this will open up and give you a whole bunch of really great resources for all things career related. Um, I'm gonna give a little plug to the Triton Career Guide. Everybody should download a copy of this as you are um, making your career plan, as you're working on your resume and cover letter, lots of good tips to help you through that. Um, this, this occupational outlook handbook is really good to research specific careers, find out what the demand in the industry is, what the salary ranges are, things like that. What can I do with this major? This is, this is the key I wanted to take you to today. So, We'll open this up, and this is just a window into this, this website. So then you click on it again, and then slide down to view all majors, and it'll take you to a page where hopefully your major is listed because there's a whole bunch of, whole bunch of choices listed on here. And so, um, Let's choose one. I saw a few, uh, I did see communication on here. So let's just open one up and take a look and I'll show you how it's broken down. So each major is broken down by different areas within the major that you could potentially work in. So under communication, we have business and I may be going fast, but don't worry, I'll, I'll go back public relations and advertising, media, nonprofit, government. You can see there's a lot of different areas that a communications major could potentially look for work in. And so under each area, it, it shows the different types of jobs or positions that are available in that particular area. And so there's several to choose from here. If any, any of those interest you, then it lists what employers are hiring for these particular positions. Obviously it doesn't name specific companies, but it gives you an idea of, of the industry and then you can continue your search from there. And then down here, it gives you specific strategies. How would you move into those companies and those specific areas? And it gives you tips on, on following that. And so all of the different majors, there we go, are broken down in that way. I saw a lot of psychology. Uh, sorry if I'm making you have double vision here. Going fast through here. I wanted to open up psychology. And same thing, breaks down those different areas here by direct care and administration. So if you prefer to work directly with clients, you know, these are some options in that field. If you prefer to work more behind the scenes doing administration work, here are some options here. And then again, the types of employers that are looking for those types of positions. So this is a really, really good uh, resource. Is there any questions at this point on, um, on this resource? What can I do with this major? I can't see the chat box, so nothing coming up? No questions. Okay, thanks Roxy.
All right, so I'm going back to Handshake. And I wanna take you to events as well because there are so many different events on Handshake and maybe you've already maneuvered this if you found your way to this event, but I always recommend for students to take a look at the events that are going on. Look every week, see what's happening. See what is relevant to the field that you're interested in. What do you want to learn? Can you learn from industry professionals? Um, are, there, are there networking opportunities so that you can learn more about the field that you'd like to go in? A um, lot of opportunities there. So check that regularly. All right, Tammy, um, do you want to take us back to the slides? Thank you, thank you. All right, and in addition to Handshake, we also have some assessments. Sometimes students are looking for ways to kind of better understand what their strengths are and how to apply them in the professional world. So these are a couple of resources that you could uh, sign up for. And I'll have Roxy, she knows a little bit more about these. So I'll let her share a little bit about the Myers-Briggs and the Clifton Strengths assessments for students. Great, thanks Kelly. So many of you may be undecided or unsure about where to go, what direction. Sometimes self-awareness is very important and there are two assessments that I would recommend. I call them career assessments. One is the MBTI, which is also known as the Myers-Briggs. It's definitely a personality assessment which can be helpful for you in interviewing as well as understanding yourself a little bit more on positions that you may be applying for. Um, it also allows you to understand how to work with others in group environments. The second one is the Clifton Strengths for Students. Um, many of our staff is certified Gallup Clifton Advisors, and I'm going to put in the Dropbox the link to find out more information on how to get information on these two assessments. Clifton Strengths allows you to identify five of your top strengths out of 34. It's a great tool. Many students have used it at career fairs. They've attached these reports to their resume, which makes you very unique. Um, it's really a great tool to use to understand and identify your top strengths. One of the questions they ask on job interviews or internships is, what are your top strengths and how do you use them? This report could be very useful and valuable for you. And I've put that in the, the link um, to our career site on how you can get more information. If you'd like to sign up for one of these assessments, I do advise you to make an appointment with a career advisor um, online through Handshake. Thank you. Thank you, Roxy. Do we have any questions regarding the assessments? All righty, if no questions there, we'll move on to the last slide. So another great way to figure out what to do with your major, what to do when you graduate is networking. And so you, you probably will hear a lot about this from us in the Career Center. We really, really encourage students to get involved in various networking opportunities and platforms because it can really be beneficial to you when you're ready to start on your career path. Um, the first one we have on here, well, two, are Triton's Connect and LinkedIn. And for those of you who are not familiar with Triton's Connect, it's, it's a really great resource for all UCSD students because it's a platform only for UCSD students and alumni. And it's, I, I think of it kind of as a cross between LinkedIn and Facebook, where you can connect with people and, um, see what kind of industries they're in, and you can search them through the majors that they have studied or through the industries that they're in, and uh, reach out to them. Ask them some questions. They are on there because they want to help. And several of them you'll see when you sign in, um, little banners across people's profiles saying willing to help. Those are people that you definitely wanna reach out to. Um, if you'd like 
a mentor, or even if you just have questions, you want to ask about the industry or ask about a, a specific person's job and how they got there, Triton's Connect is a really good resource for that. Uh, LinkedIn, as you probably know, is another great networking resource. Um, I think it's a little bit more difficult to reach out to professionals on LinkedIn because there's not already that natural connection. But we'll talk a little bit more about how to maneuver that later in this series. There are a couple of networking um, sessions. So if you want more information on that, those would be great to come to. Uh, other networking opportunities include, include events. And as you know, we're doing everything virtually now, but there are still a lot of networking opportunities online um, to learn about various industries, learn about specific jobs and connect with professionals, connect with peers. Um, so like I said, keep an eye out on Handshake for what events are happening. Pay attention to your department newsletters. There's always a lot of resources in there as well. And then consulting with faculty advisors and your peers. You know, those are people who are interested in the field that you're in. And a lot of them are very knowledgeable about it. So don't be afraid to ask questions of your advisors. Talk to your fellow students. Um, and with faculty, you know, they may, even if they don't have time, maybe they can refer you to someone else who could offer you some advice. And then finally, joining a student organization is a really great way to um, not only gain some experience, um, some leadership skills, but also to find out, hmm, is this an area that I might like to focus on? And it gives you a little bit of real world experience and what it's like if you're thinking about, you know, going into the business world or, um, I don't know, there's any number of student organizations that you can join. And I'm sure, oh, yep, yeah, I see Roxy has already put the link. So there's a huge list of student organizations. And um, that's something, involvement with those also looks really good on a resume when you're um, applying for internships. Employers really like to see that involvement. So um, these are all really good ways to do some networking and um, meet new people and kind of help you out on your path of where you want to go. So this is the final slide. And Tammy, if you want to um, go ahead and take the slide off there, that would be fine. But we kind of breezed through it a lot faster than I thought we would. I thought we might have some more questions, but um, that's kind of the general overview of, you know, getting started and, and the rest is gonna be up to you to start researching through the resources that we sent. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. You know, if you want to unmute yourselves and just ask, totally fine. Let's have a discussion. Um, if you're more comfortable putting your questions in the chat, go for it. Uh, Roxy will be helping with that. Uh, if we don't have questions that are coming up, then you guys will get some time back in your day. But I do want to make sure that um, you know, we do open that up and, and we get everybody's questions answered while we're here. All right, we do have a question in the chat box and I'll let Roxy respond to that one since it's uh, the assessment, has to do with the assessments. Are you gonna answer with the group, Roxy, or are you doing it in chat? Thank you, I had to be unmuted um, by the host, <laughs> appreciate it. Um, okay, so the question in the box is, how different would you say between the 16 personnel test and the actual MBTI test? Um, I'm not really clear on that question. Um, could, who addressed that question? Uh, I believe it's Irene Tam. Irene, what, are you asking about um, the, the, the personality differences? versus the actual MBTI. The MBTI actually covers the 16 different personalities. That, that is part of it. Um, not sure if, if you had a more specific question. 
Irene, are you online? It does cover the 16 if that's your question. Okay, she said okay. great. Okay. Thank Perfect. you, Roxy. Thank you, Irene. Um, did have a question. When is the next seminar in the series? They will be every Tuesday from 11 to 12. Um, and next week we have a, it's a part two of career exploration. And this is kind of more uh, focused on people who are like not really sure what they're doing. What if they change their mind? What if they change their mind later? Um, you know, have a lot of those questions still floating around. So we'll talk about what to do if you have explored your options and you're still not sure which way to go. Um, you'll hear from a couple professionals, self-included. Um, I do have a special guest coming as well, um, who have taken some su surprise turns in their careers and what advice they have to offer. So we have another question, Jeff Kelly. We have actually okay. two. One is where can you find the recording of this actual presentation? Great question. Um, once the recording is available, it will be posted on the Career Center's YouTube page. So that may take um, a little bit of time for us to do, but planning on posting it there. The next question, Kelly, is can you please recommend anything for students who are completing their degree remotely in another country? Most of the resources and employer events through Handshake are based in San Diego and California, which makes sense, but makes it kind of hard for students internationally or not in the country. Could you respond to that? Yes, and I think she's not in another country. She's in another part of the country. Oh, okay. Or those, some people on the platform could be in another country. Yes, and so Handshake actually does have a lot of resources all over the country. Um, I'm not sure if they have international opportunities listed on there, but I do know a lot of them are still remote, being that, you know, we're not out of the pandemic yet. So a lot of them you can do from anywhere you are. Um, even if even if the company is based in San Diego. There is also another resource on that resources page in under Career Center on, on Handshake called Going Global. And that's got a lot of different, um, both domestic and international opportunities listed on there as well. So definitely check that out. Another question, will every week's meeting be recorded? I am gonna to try to record them. There may be a couple that we don't because we're gonna do breakout rooms and those you can't record anyway. Um, but if possible, I will record them because I did have a lot of requests for that. So I'll do my best and they'll all be posted on the, um, the Career Center YouTube page. Okay. Uh, what advice, oh, I think I... Okay, here's one. What advice do you have for students who want to work outside of their majors? Good question. I would say come to next week's workshop. <laughs> we'll be talking about that. Um, but also, I think that um, you might want to talk to a career coach individually to discuss your individual situation. But, you know, I, I don't think you have to be too serious about you know, connecting your major with what exactly you're going to do when you graduate. A lot of people do do something different outside of their major. And the good thing is, is, you know, the education that you're getting here at UCSD prepares you for all kinds of things. And depending on what your major is, you're going to have a lot of different skills that you take out into the world, not just one job you can do. So there will be a lot of opportunities available for you. It's just kind of figuring out how do you capture those on a resume? How do you know what to search for? Things like that. And that's why making um, an individual appointment might be helpful when you're ready to do that. Someone asked in the box, where can you find Handshake? And I redirected you go to career.ucsd.edu. You click on Handshake and you'll have to create a 
profile. Is that correct, Kelly? Or is it already automatically created? Uh, I think they have to create a profile. Mm -hmm. If you have not yet done so, um, definitely do that because Handshake is how you're going to make an appointment with anybody in the Career Center. It's how you sign up for any of the Career Center related events. Um, it's a really good resource. Employers can find you on there. Um, they can find your resume if it's posted on there. So you definitely want to sign up for Handshake and utilize it. All right, any other questions? Jenna says, I thought you could just log in with your SSO as long as you say you're from UCSD. That, that could be correct. It's a little bit different for staff. So um, thank you for sharing that, Jenna. If that is correct, then good. <laughs> I also just want to include there is an app that is used. If you want to, there is a Handshake app. But make sure you sign up for your correct Handshake app. All right, and to review. How do, oh, there's another question. How do we stand out from applicants when having minimal experience or will this be covered next week? That's a really good question. Um, I think that would probably be better covered in one of the resume workshops where we talk about, you know, what needs to be included in there and how do you write a summary, things like that. Um, and that's also, that's also a great question for an individual, um, an individual meeting when you're getting your resume reviewed or maybe you're doing some more career exploration, but thinking about what are your competencies, referring back to those. And, and sometimes students say, well, you know, I haven't, I don't have much work experience or, you know, I don't have anything to put on a resume. You have lots of stuff to put on a resume. You just have to be creative about it. And so that's why we encourage you to attend events, to, um, Oh gosh, I just went blank. To to join student organizations, you know the, that's experience that you can put on there. Um, the projects that you do in your classes, those are experience. Volunteer work that you do in the community, great experience. So all of those things are going to add up to make you uh, a good candidate. And a lot of employers, even if someone may have more experience. If you've got the drive and the personality and assertiveness, motivation, willingness to learn, they may choose you over somebody else who's got more skills because they know that you're going to be a great person to work with and willing to learn. So, um, you know, just some things to think about there. And we have a question. There is a few people graduating in June. Their question um, is, will I still have access to Handshake after I graduate? And that, I believe, Roxy, it, they have access for a year. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. You have access for one year from the date of graduation. So if you graduate in June, you have till next June, 2022. If some of you are summer graduates, graduating in summer, August, you have till next year, August. So it goes by your degree posted on your um, degree, one year. Thank you for that. But you can always access Triton's Connect because you'll always be a Triton. <laughs> um, question, I'm sorry, but where can I search for, what can I do with the major? We just need um, a refresh there. Where can that, where can we go to that? What can I do with that major resource? Yeah, so to review that, um, you go in a handshake. Do you guys want me to show again to screen share? I can do that really quick if you like. Um, and for those of you who already saw and you're, you're ready to go, you're welcome to go. But um, I'll share the screen once again and, and okay. show you. Thank you, Anuka. An Anuka put like um, a format in the chat. Exactly. Oh, Thank you. Very much. And thanks for showing it. Some people are visual, so I'm glad that you're showing it again. Some people may have just came in late as well. Yeah. So this here is the homepage of Handshake. You go into Career Center. And then from Career Center, you click on Resources. 
And voila, there it is. Pretty easy. Another question just popped in. What is, oops, sorry. What is some advice to someone who's interested in multiple fields but doesn't have time or money to pursue testing to narrow down a focused long-term career goal? For example, being interested in psychology, interior design, and physical therapy. What advice would you give this student? Oh, I say come next week. <laughs> <laughs> I keep you in suspense. Um, no, but I think you have your whole life ahead of you. You don't have to do everything at the same time. You have lots of time to pursue different interests. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to think that you have to do it all at once or to think that you have to choose one and that's the only thing you can do. You've got you know, lots of time ahead of you to be able to do all kinds of things with your life. So um, that is my advice. Um, just so you know, the statistics are people in your generation will change their careers probably 15 times. So it's okay to have many different interests and definitely review the Triton Career Guide that we posted. It's also on the Career Center website that can help you identify and have you think things through. The two assessments that we talked about as well could also help you become more self-aware. Thank you. These are great questions, everybody. Really appreciate it and glad that you could join us for this today. Um, going once, twice for any more questions. All right, well, we'll wrap it up early then and give you some more time to maybe go enjoy some sun today. Um, like I said, next week is part two of career exploration where we'll talk about changing our mind and doing different things along the way. So please feel free to join if you're interested and hope to see you again. Have a great rest of the day.